Put 7200. Okay, again, that's. Okay. Anything else you have noted? Start of 1 by 500, 1 by 200. Okay. Anything else? I saw again. Okay, uh, these okay. These are the technical numbers which you have uh, seen in a camera. Uh, when you go to the processing part or the uh, composing composing a shoot uh, short part, have you uh, noticed any numbers? Yes. Yeah, temperature. Anything else? Okay, okay. These are the sum of the numbers we are going to look at. Uh, some of the terms I'm going to use as ratios, graphs, and histogram. Yeah. So the uh, uh, the numbers in photography can be uh, divided into two parts. This is the technical part of it, and this is the composition part of it. Thanks to DSLRs, most of these numbers are inbuilt. We need not take care of it. You can just press one AV mode, PV, uh, TV mode and everything. But uh, like till about a decade ago, we still use 35 mm analog cameras, which is the film cameras. And these formulas and the numbers I'm going to talk about for the next 30 minutes are some of the things we, we needed to think about before even clicking a shot. And uh, the aspect ratio ratios, which I'm going to talk about, the golden uh, rectangle, which I'm going to talk about, is the composition, which we still use. The rule of thirds, we still have the grid on the uh, camera and we still use, OK? Okay, uh, let's start with focal length. Uh, this you would have seen in your physics class 7, the light, uh, how the light falls on the object and gets into the camera and how the image is formed. So this uh, diagram here explains the focal length of the uh, focal length term which we are going to talk. Can anyone describe what's a focal length? Yeah. Okay. The distance between the lens and the major element, which the which is the major element in the sensor. Okay. So it's basically the distance between the object in layman terms, object and your lens, the midpoint of your lens. This is yes. I just put in a layman term, and you're adding a technical term to it. So. Okay, so uh, we use focal length in the in this, these kind of terms, f two or something, f one point eight, f four, and so on. So uh, focal length very is, is very important to uh, photography because we use different kind of lenses. The gentleman here is using a telephoto lens, which is gives you a very uh, zoom kind of uh, 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 picture. Then we use the normal kit lenses, which is 1855, which gives you a telephoto kind of, a wider kind of image. So what type of photography you are going to concentrate on, the focal length is going to be helpful in that. So um, for a 35 mm uh, wire, uh, analog camera, there can be only a, quite a number of wide angle lenses and quite a number of telephoto lenses. And there are a couple of uh, lenses which we use 50 and 55 mm, which we call as the portrait lens, is the normal aspect that fits the 35 mm, which means it is equal to what your normal eye sees. So 50 mm and 55 mm, the focal distance, is what your normal eye sees. But when we go down a bit, which is 35 mm, 18 mm, 10, 24 mm, it's it's a wide, wide angle again. So this is, a 50 mm. this is the normal portrait lens we use. This is what your normal eye sees. This is this focal length is equal to what your normal eye sees. When you go down the zoom length, the uh, the object becomes wider, and you could have seen the fisheye lenses where you can see what your peripheral peripheral vision is. Uh, you can see. So those are the zoom, uh, zoom uh, wide angle lenses. Okay, I need some angle. Next, we are going to talk about angle of view. Okay, I talked about 50 mm, 28 mm, 100 mm. What exactly is this mm? 
So, when a camera is projected, the maximum distance which the particular focal length covers was traced like this. This was 28 mm field. So, 28 mm uh, could concentrate on so much field. And then you had 20, 200 mm which concentrate on this much field. So, this angle was calculated and that was given as the angle of view. So, for 28 mm, 75 percentage of your vision is recorded in a camera. And so far, for 400, you have 6 percentage of vision recorded in camera. So, the higher the uh, focal length you have, you have a zoom, but also your vision is cut. So, if I'm uh, using a 200 here and uh, focusing on a gentleman on the very last row, I could probably get his facial features and that's about it. But if I'm using an 18 or, uh, or lower than that, I could get the whole uh, crowd seated here. So, this is the importance of the focal length we are uh, to uh, talking in the photography. And uh, the next one is aperture. Um, define aperture. Anyone? Okay. Okay. I am going to relate aperture for uh, the shutter everything to a door. So aperture is basically how uh, big the door is. So we have a glass door there. It's huge. Yeah. So but uh, if it is open completely, then uh, the amount of light which is coming in, and if it's open only to a pinpoint, the amount of light which is coming in is what we are going to talk about in aperture. Okay. This is interesting. Okay, have you seen this image before? Should be there in every uh, website which talks about photography. So these are the examples of some of the focal uh, lenses and the uh, resultant aperture opening of the lens. So I told you about the door. Think of the lens opening as the door. The first one, f1.4, has the maximum opening. So the door, the door is completely open. And the f16 has a pinpoint. So you're not allowing the stranger to come in. The light is standing outside. You don't want the complete light to be in. So that is, the, uh, that is what aperture is all about. Why do we need aperture? We have light, which is the physics of the uh, photography. So we are dealing with light. We are playing around with light to capture an image. So when we, uh, uh, when we fully open uh, the F, uh, aperture, you are going to get the complete light coming into your image. So let's think we are standing on the outside corridor of this hall and uh, clicking the garden. And I use a F1.4. How, how do you think the image would look like? very bright and uh, most of the details won't be available. So I, I don't want that kind of situation. I want to click the lawn. I want to click the greenery around it. I want to click maybe the people sitting around. I want the details. So I would adjust the aperture so to a level, maybe f4 or f2.8, so that the light is not completely settled on the sensor and only a certain amount of light is uh, taken. And again, let's say same SAP labs, the time is around 8 o'clock in the night. You don't have any sun. Maybe the few uh, spotlights around. What would be the aperture I'd be using? Anyone? The largest. Because you want all the available light in, inside your photograph. So whichever light it's going to take in there. So I can't use the F16 because if I'm using a pinpoint again, all I'd be getting is a black screen and nothing more. So that's what aperture is about. Okay. How do you calculate the uh, amount of light which is going to come in? Remember this formula? So I said the amount, the how big the door is what the amount of light which is going to coming in. So the area of the lens which is open is what the amount of light is going to come in, coming in. So the let's say the radius of the uh, lens we are using is for, uh, seven. So your area is going to be pi seven square. So this this will be the um, amount of light coming in to get a proper image on your lens. A uh, gentleman has 200 mm and 50 mm, I guess. 7200. Okay, I'm going to take two lenses, 22 mm 
and a 50 mm. I already told you a wide angle lens would give you a wider space of image and if, uh, the higher you go, the, the image gets cropped up. So when I use a 28 mm stand from there and click on uh, click a wall of me standing or anyone standing, the amount, uh, the, the area which the 28 mm is going to cover is something like this, 20 into 10 meter, the height and the width. So let's say my 28 mm has a 14 m, uh, millimeter diameter and I'm, uh, I'm sorry, and it's capturing a wide image of 2030. Let me take the same diameter and change the lens into 50 mm. So I'm, I have used a 28 mm with 14 mm and I'm using a 50 mm with 14 mm. So what do you, a rough estimation, what do you think the um, result would be? The diameter is the same but I'm using a different kind of lens with higher telefocal uh, length. Diameter can be diameter lens, lens, lens. I said the image would be cropped up, right? So when I'm using a 50, which is uh, almost twice the uh, uh, focal, I'm, I'll be only getting half of the wide screen. So I'm not going to get the 20 into th uh, 30, but I'll, I'll be getting only half of the uh, dimensions. So what happens is the amount of light, which, uh, which I said is, uh, this, 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 uh, the, this is 154. But when I'm using a uh, uh, 28 mm, I'm going to get the complete light. When I'm using a 50 mm, will I be getting the complete light? I'd be getting only four per, uh, one by four percentage of it. Only twenty five percentage of what the original light is going to. I'm going to get in a fifty mm. So basic, basically, I'm going to get an underexposed image. I'd be getting all blacks or maybe completely shadowed picture. So I would have to think about increasing the diameter. So you mean to say, if I use a twenty eight mm lens and a fifty mm lens, mm -hmm. it's same aperture, mm -hmm. amount of light coming in is different. Uh, is same. Uh, um, is, is lesser. It's lesser. Yeah, when I'm using a 50 mm, I'm, I'm getting only one, one, uh, 25 percentage of the area. It's going to crop up. So there's uh, the, uh, the only one by fourth percentage of the light which I'm getting in a 28 mm is going to be captured in a 50 mm. Exposure will be same. Yeah. So the amount of light which is coming is in less. Got that? Okay. So what I have to do is think about how I can increase the. Uh, uh, increase the lighting or get the same uh, output as in a 28 mm. So I basically have to get a uh, it, like light four times the 154 mm, isn't it? Long calculation shot, you have to use a 28 mm, which is the, uh, uh, we, are, we are using a 14 mm diameter now, we have to use a 28 mm diameter to get the same light as the original 28 mm lens. Okay, I think I've lost most of the crowd here. No, because it, it sounds like mm -hmm. we change the lenses and keep the uh, aperture same. Mm -hmm. you, what you are saying is uh, uh, the bigger lens will lose the light and you will have under exposure. Yes, image. yes. That won't happen. Yes. Okay, uh, now you are using a DSLR. So DSLR is uh, designed so the F2 stop is gets the same light for any lens. So if I'm using f2 in a DSLR with a 28 mm lens or a 50 mm lens, I'm going to get the same results. That's why I started with a uh, disclaimer saying I'm talking about a 30, 35 mm analog camera. DSLR is completely electronic. You need not even think about any of the technical terms we are talking about here. One touch, put it on auto mode and you're going to get everything right. <laughs> You'll get everything right because the EV, or the aperture, everything is set as per the scale of the in, uh, standard organization. Manual mode aperture display does not work. What, you're saying is that it what I'm focus saying focus is, the focal lens, the yeah, I'm saying is if f2 is set, no, no matter which lens I'm uh, changing, the f2 would uh, fo focus on uh, the 50, uh, the collaborate, uh, the reciprocal. Wait a second corresponding lens. So if I'm using a 28 mm, the f2 for that would be the scale on the 14 mm, okay, the focal length. I'll, we'll go to that scale later on. When I'm using uh, the same f2 with a 50 mm, the camera resets itself into a 28 uh, mm diameter. That's what DSLR is great at. 
you need not uh, think about the numbers yes point and shoots are better in that because it has even more uh, what do you call wizardification of the numbers okay so what i am talking about is um, analog camera which mostly uh, still most of the professionals use we uh, prof you know you can't see the image uh, in a digital screen before you're clicking in an analog film camera so you have to think about these light and the histograms which is uh, which is available and click you you'll have to uh, you can't click too many numbers or as the film is expensive as we all know so the camera automatically the yeah it is set so that it adjusts itself to the uh, lens it is uh, changed into okay we'll come to that uh, cheat sheet next i have the uh, li list of that and that is the next <laughs> this is the cheat sheet so if you see the 28 uh, of f stop is diameter is 14 right the example i said and uh, the area covered is 154 take care of the uh, take note of the values and see the 55 it automatically goes to 28 13.75 and 5, 594 this is what the dslr is programmed for these all these value is stored completely in the dslr and you need not take care of no, the motor the motor of the camera is manufactured in a way that it detects the lens it detects the lens and changes the aperture accordingly no aperture that aperture code is actually in the lens the uh, okay we'll argue about this later okay <laughs> Yeah, if there is no communication, you are not going. You have to clap with two hands. Okay. <laughs> so here, what we are actually doing is, if we increase the f-stop, we are decreasing the light. So if I am using a f-stop of one point four, I am actually exposing more light, and I am using f of uh, f sixteen, I am using very less light. And Okay let's talk about the shutter speed next and i think that's the shutter speed yeah you would have seen these numbers 1 by 1000 1 by 500 in your dslrs yeah what is it exactly can anyone tell other than the people in the front row i am damn sure i am lost all of you guys <laughs> yeah so it is actually the division of second 1 by 1000th of a second so the uh, the uh, usually uh, photographers click at 1.1 by 125 which is a very minuscule time but it uh, captures the image without much shake or blur motion but the lower you go you are exposing your uh, lens to again more light we talked about aperture as the how big the door is the shutter is how long the do door is open so i if the door is like this completely open i'm going to expose more light but i'm shutting like this i'm going to take only one percentage of the light which is actually available so if this is one this is 1.125 maybe I, i don't know i'm just a hypothetical estimation okay so this cheat sheet is a uh, what shutter speed goes with what f stop you can download it from my website i guess so this cheat sheet gives you if i'm using a f1.25 in a sun, sunny uh, atmosphere then uh, f stop should be 8 and go, so on you can always the uh, can you note the arrow marks you can always dumb down your uh, f stops and the uh, shutter speed let me say i want a panning photograph where i am standing but the whole um, uh, um, uh, activity which is going beyond me is a blur so i would uh, lower my shutter speed to 1 by 30 or 1 by 15 and increase the f stop the arrow mark the ideal is 1 by 30 should have a f stop of 8 but if messing up with the type of photography i am using i can always bump down my uh, uh, f stop or increase my shutter speed okay got it not of head please no <laughs> okay okay uh, we talked about f stop can you uh, give me another interesting thing which uh, f stop uses 
we have this technical term talking about by every photographer depth of field, depth of field dof in any photograph you take the first comment by the photographer is the dof is good the bokeh is good of course we don't know what the hell they are talking about f stop actually i told you like when i am increasing the uh, uh, shutter speed and i want a photograph like i am still but the whole uh, amount of activity which is going on i need in a panning motion let's say i am standing here b b in front of my uh, board and a gentleman over there is clicking first his attention should be on both me and my um, board so i'd be using a f stop of 16 where both of us are in proper uh, detail the, the details are there then the thing uh, the photographer thinks no rati is beautiful let me take the picture of only her and me let me blur out the uh, blackboard so the whiteboard so he thinks let me adjust the f stop and he lowers the f stop he goes to maybe 4 or 2 so only i'd be uh, visible cause i'm in the front panel we we are talking about paints so uh, the first plane has me the second plane has the uh, uh, board and the third plane has the uh, projector behind of me so i am visible but the next two bo uh, pans uh, planes are completely blurred out then the gentleman thinks che rati is not at all looking good let me concentrate on the uh, mathematical calculations on the board so he sh shifts his focus have you seen the red points in the camera which keeps on moving you can adjust that uh, dots actually so you adjust the dot and focus on this board and uh, magically i'll be blurred the projected will be blurred and the uh, white board alone would be in complete detail this is the magic called dof or the depth of the field okay okay and next we talked about the uh, one of the other technical aspect iso what is the full form of iso very normal thing yeah international standard organization it what it started was iso was the number of a uh, number given to the sensitivity of the film when the film got up upgraded into um, dslr and digital um, photography the people were stuck on the imagination so they just used the same iso term again they stuck to their roots and we are still using the iso term because the sensitivity in I, that term iso has no connection whatsoever so the, the number the number is uh, as in your camera should be 100 200 400 800 against then you uh, have the uh, 2000 uh, 2800 i guess and 3200 1600. 1600 1600 and 3200 uh, actually it's in the ratio of 2 <laughs> every value is multiplied by 2 and it's increased so the higher sorry sorry the higher the you go the higher the your uh, sensor is sensitive so at first we start uh, talked about how big the door is focal and then we uh, talked about how uh, how long the door is open and now i am talking about the uh, the uh, the board behind the door okay so the board behind the door is the one which is taking the light so uh, depending on how big and how uh, long the door is open and also the sensitivity sensitivity of this guy standing in behind of the door is what gives you a perfect image that's this is called a uh, triangle light triangle basically okay so when i i am very sensitive let me say uh, i'm people troll a lot in photo uh, in tro, twitter and facebook let me say my sensitivity value is 100 no matter how many ever guys say uh, whatever bad about me i wouldn't care i just do my job if let's say my sensitivity factor is 3200 i'd be a melting pot crying right here that's what going to happen so the same thing is what for photography and iso sensitivity when my film or the sensor digital sensor is at 100 the, the image takes in whatever the light comes in and gives you a perfect picture i'm using a 3200 i'm going to get pixelated images or what you call as grain or noise so you have the image yes only it won't be clear it won't be clari uh, clarified and you have all the dots and the dust going on so we don't want that kind of uh, image but we can't avoid higher higher sensitivity also because i'm not going to be getting all the available light when i'm shooting sap labs at about 9 10 o'clock in the night we need to amp up the iso sensitivity we can't avoid the grains but at the same time we have no other choice so that's why we have the higher iso sensitivity in every camera okay 
How many of you have seen the histogram in your DSLR camera? Yes. How many of you can read it? Okay. Layman terms. How? Why do you need a histogram? Okay. Do you know what is the layman terms mean? <laughs> Sorry, I'm picking on you. <laughs> okay. You would have something like this. Yes? You, uh, in normal uh, present time DSLR, you get this image after the picture is clicked. In 35 mm, you have, you have this image one, once you're clicking in SLRs, okay? So what this is exactly is, so it is a graph plotted against the number of pixels your image has, uh, 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 like with respect to the, to the number of occurrences. So let me say I'm clicking this background and me. It is completely white, isn't it? So the light w uh, and the picture would be something like this. O or the number of occurrences of white would be jada and the shadows and the black would be very less. And let me uh, uh, say I have a black background here and I'm standing with, I'm with a white dress or something. So the occurrence would be something like this. Because the blacks would be, the shadows would be uh, too much and the white portion of the uh, image is very less. White in the sense, the lighter part, not white in the uh, literal sense. We are talking about the highlights, uh, the glass, the uh, reflections and all those stuff. So what we uh, exactly we need histogram is to have an image which is actually like this. You have the white part, you have the black part, but the midtones are in a, in a mountainical kind of arrangement. So you, when you click an image, you're going to uh, take a note that your uh, light, the highlight and shadow is balanced and your mid-tones are in, in a, uh, optimal conditions. For DSLR, let me think I'm clicking in Andaman, no shades was to whatsoever and I'm in a very bright place. So uh, I'm not going to able to review my image which is uh, shown after the uh, click is done. So what I'm going to do is take a look at the histogram and see how it has, uh, which side it is leaning on. If I, it's leaning on the whiter side, I have to control so it goes more to a plateau kind of uh, arrangement. And if it's leaning more on the um, right side of the portion, which is the darker shadow side of the portion, I have to uh, adjust it so much, the, adjust the exposure and the aperture value. So it again gives you a, a mountain or a plateau kind of arrangement. That means you have clicked a optimal light exposed picture. So histogram is what which used to guide a SLR camera when uh, you couldn't uh, uh, decide on what aperture, what focal length and what ISO sensitivity you have to click in. Okay. We talked about the technical portions. Can you give me um, the definition of rule of thirds? This is the only number which is used in the composition of photography, but it is also the most interesting and most uh, complicated number we are going to use. Anyone? Rule of thirds? At least know the grid which forms the rule of thirds. It should be in every camera. This is only one of the rules and the most basic and the most followed rule of the composition of photography. The rule of thirds uh, says that when you click an image, you have to divide your grid into two horizontal and two vertical lines and your image is perfect when the image clicked is somewhere on this intersection points. This is what rule of third is, this is what we use to click the horizon. We, um, we click so much so, so that the sea, the sea level is here. The horizon is here and not somewhere in the middle or not in the top. So your negative space is taken accordingly and that's why we need the rule of thirds. Okay, rule of thirds is fine. Why do I talk about rule of thirds? Yeah. The, the subject you're clicking. So instead of clicking me like this, you can place me in the right side or the left side of the image, which gives you a story. You have a negative space here and it's arched character instead of just clicking me in the middle and showing a picture of Rati. 
if you click uh, with me here and the board and the projector here so i you are placing me in a left let me say you are giving your story ki i am uh, presenting the uh, one session if i am in the center of the uh, photograph and nothing is behind me you are just clicking a picture of rati so you just add a sense of drama to your picture that's why you need a rule of thirds okay anybody under, have heard this term golden rectangle not okay <laughs> what is the golden ratio okay uh, just one second uh, this is what the histogram or uh, the one with darker shadows and the last one is the optimal one you have a mountain uh, like plateau kind of thingy okay this is a rough uh, pictorial rep representation okay What is the golden ratio? Yeah, I know it's up there. Define. <laughs> so, golden ratio is a combination of a square and a rectangle, where the um, uh, the the aspect ratio of the gold, uh, that square and the rectangle are similar. This is the formula. the length of the smaller rectangle divided by its width is equal to the length of the larger rectangle divided by its width huh makes sense, makes sense yeah <laughs> i just defined it <laughs> so this is what is used in the aspect ratio of photography also the golden ratio is what defines your body the golden ratio is what defines the sp spiral uh, uh, pro what do you call molluscs in the sea the golden ratio is what defines sunflowers arrangement of the seeds the golden ratio is what defines the aspect ratio of photography okay uh, once you're cropping the image do you know the numbers you crop for okay 1 is to 2 1 is to 1 which is the square aspect then you have the 16 is to 9 which is the widest and you have 3 is to 2 which is the uh, 35 mm then you have 4 is to 3 which is the uh dslr uh, aspect ratio so this one the black one is the 1.1 square ratio F next is 5.4 where i have removed a small portion of the right side of the image then you have the 4 is to 3 which is what you get in a dslr the norm uh, which we have now and the last one is 3 3 is to 2 which you get in a 35 mm i haven't showed you 16 is to 9 i guess no i have showed you the green one is the 16 is to 9 which is the wide gives you a panoramic kind of uh, picture so that is the widest we have why am i talking about a uh, golden rectangle uh, th because the uh, stalwarts in photography follow these golden rectangles and they never ever crop their images after that henry uh, what is his name henry cartier henry cartier bresnan anyone heard about this name he is supposed to be the forefather of photography the uh, 35 mm photography he always composed so that his image followed this rule the spira mirabilis and he never cropped this image i always crop my image because i am not that good how many of you crop your images yeah everyone crop their images i just want to uh, look at my beautiful face and not anything else so i will crop my image so but the stalwarts use these uh, uh, spira mirabilis can you see the superimposition of th rule of thirds there and can you see the uh, uh, subject is uh, right on the point where i have said the intersection so this golden ratio is what defines the composition of the picture you are taking okay so you can uh, remember like this 4 is to 3 is your standard television 60 is to uh, 6 is to 9 is your hd tv that's the uh, layman definition of aspect ratio okay these are some of the numbers and i don't think many of you still are with me so if you have any questions please i know nobody is with me there's the first row which is uh, asking questions and the rest of it i'm like photograph like okay uh, photography is not about creating a page that's one, one thing for sure the lot of struggle goes before creating a page i think swarup would explain the 
<laughs> creating the Facebook uh, website part of the photography. But lots of effort goes uh, into photography. But yeah, all these numbers I talked about, you have the easy DSLR now. You just need to click on certain electronic buttons and you have everything there. Uh, so, since we're saying that DSLR makes it a lot easier, mm -hmm. I'm kind of Uh, okay, uh, I, I, I'm still uh, concerned about question. Maybe I have to read about that. Uh, but for to me, there's a communication between the camera and the lens. Huh? I don't know. Uh. Well, what I was trying to ask you is, uh, even the map of board mm -hmm. itself is automated. Like, yes, the manual mode, a lot, lots of calculation is previously programmed into the camera. Okay. You. There are some things which is still adjustable because, like, I give you a cheat sheet of focal length and the uh, shutter speed. In a point and sp uh, shoot, you can't uh, fix that. It just gives you whatever is available. But in a ma manual mode of a DSLR, you can adjust that and get a pleasingly good image. But certain values are uh, programmed into the camera that you can't change much. Anything else? Brick bats, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, I started my photography with a point and shoot, Canon A590. My first image which was sold for 5,000 bucks was a Canon 590 shot. So I'm going to say the camera is not a point at all. You can start with any camera you have. The thing is the um, uh, uh, composition you take in, uh, taken into, the technical aspects you learn and how good the image is. It's all here. It's a creative field. It's not a technical field. So I wouldn't uh, say you have to go for this camera, but there are semi-pro semi, semi -pro cameras which is which are available that I would suggest because camera at the end of the day is expensive. You can't keep on upgrading your camera like you upgrade your mobile phones or iPods. Okay. Anything else? And also the, uh, the number of cameras in the field are increasing every day. 550D of Canon was supposed to be the super good super prosumer camera, but right now it has been discontinued and we have a 600D. And maybe we'll have a 650D, I'm sorry. And maybe we'll have a better camera in next two weeks. So anything else? Okay. Uh, it comes with practice. When I started, that was in 2009, I ha took time to change the lens even or uh, change the settings, but it comes uh, automatically to, uh, to you uh, um, during the peri uh, practice time. Okay, uh, You look at an image and you immediately know the amount of light is good or bad, what is the lens you need. That, that comes, with, comes to you with practice. You can't learn it overnight. Uh, and uh, to me, most of the uh, professional photographers, they look at the image and they, um, maybe in a thumbnail or something, and they immediately go, it is a shake, there's a shake, there's a blur, it's not a perfect photograph, which a layman wouldn't understand even there is a high definition TV right in front of him. So it comes with practice. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Uh, conventional photography doesn't allow post-processing. So if you are submitting an image to National Geography or any of those stalwarts, magnum photos and everything, you can't even crop your images. You can't even touch your co color or you can't even touch your light. It has to be, huh? Can they, can they make out that you? Yeah, they can. You have a software for that. If you uh, have even changed a bit of EV exposure, you can make out key. There's a change that happened there. But, but minimum, uh, modifications are allowed. Not, uh, I'm saying uh, in a Japan competition. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I gave you the names, National Geography and everything. But if you are publishing in Indian Express and Hindu, no matter how much modification you do, they would accept it. <laughs> okay. But if you are uh, doing it on your, for your own sake, for your Facebook page or your, for your friends, go, go around. Experiment uh, as much as you can. There's no stopping. Yeah, Instagram, ready-made templates available. <laughs> And yeah, Instagram uh, releases new templates every month or something. I think there was a couple of them last week. Something like that. Anyone else? So, another basic question. Mm. I wouldn't say it loses its uh, value, but it loses its credibility. I am taking a picture of Taj Mahal. Let it be. The colors are there. I, I'd say Taj Mahal as such is beautiful. The colors are there. 
I take a pleasing image. Then I want to go experimental and I do a HDR processing, amp up the color of the sky, uh, amp up the uh, details of the cloud. That makes a fake kind of image. That's not exactly what is available to a human eye. That I wouldn't uh, think as a credible picture. It, it gives you a drama. It will ooh a, a layman who is just seeing pictures. But as a photographer, that's not exactly what you're creating. Photographer, a photograph at the end of the day is you're creating memories for the rest of your lifetime and you're not, you don't want to fake that memory. So post-processing has its advantages and disadvantages. This part of the crowd, did I make any sense at all? No? Brickbats? Say I didn't understand. I'll come sit with you and try to make you understand. <laughs> Not for the last uh, drop. <laughs> you dro dropped in at the last moment. Of course, you won't understand. You said, if you don't understand, I'll give you the handout. <laughs> you can read it out. <laughs> Anyone else? I just want to make one comment. Yeah. Uh, these rules are there as rules, mm -hmm. but there are great photographs <coughs> do not follow these rules. So it is not mandatory. It, at the end of the day, rules are made to be broken. So, so you make the rule, make broke, break the rule. It's up to you. <laughs> yeah, you, you, there, you know, there is a straight way to success and there is a shortcut way to success. At the end of this is the longer way to success, tedious way to success. This doesn't. It is just to know that there are things. It's a study that these things are there. Yeah, because. The images uh, taken with these roles are pleasing to see, but this is not the only thing that uh, makes a good image. Okay, we so didn't, that, we didn't, did, yeah, we didn't arrive on DSLR overnight. It took a long process. So this was the tedious process. Now we have the DSLR, which have the shortcuts. We break the rules and do everything. So this process uh, was done over a long period. Go ahead, break your rules. Nobody is gonna question. No, that message has to be given. Yeah, yeah. Please <laughs> give it, give it up to him. <laughs> Okay? Take care. They went bankrupt, so. <laughs> we can't help that. We still have Leica and some, some other brands. I, I don't know of the mind, but we still, still have, but very expensive. And also, good point to note, you have it in Bangalore, but not in Chennai. So if I need to buy a film, I, I make a trip here every time, so. Okay, thanks for the lovely time and please ask any questions. I'm going to be around here till about 6 o'clock. Please ask questions if I'm seen around running. Okay, thank you so much.